Hey there, Riverman fans. I'm Jason Ruff, and welcome to the Dry Dock Podcast. Hey there, Riverman fans. I'm Jason Ruff, and welcome back to another episode of the Dry Dock Podcast. It's the podcast where we get a chance to talk with some Riverman greats and legends, past and present. Not future, we haven't quite invented the time machine yet, but we're still working on that. Our next guest, he is the man, the face of the franchise, a Peoria native, a two-time President's Cup champion, just the second American-born player in SBHL history to eclipse 300 career points. I am referring to the captain, Alec Hageman. Alec, it took us a while, but it's great to see you, my friend. Uh, downstairs in the coach's office, it looks like. How have you been? How's your summer uh, with the Mustangs and getting ready for uh, season number 41 of Peoria Riverman Hockey? Uh, it's good. Uh, first of all, great intro. Loved it. Uh, no, it's uh, it's good. We're just, uh, like I said, all summer, just kind of recovering from an injury during the season and uh, just been kind of working with Gee during camps before the surgery, and now I'm just kind of working out my legs and everything, trying to stay in shape as much as I can while my arm's kind of out of use for the time being. And uh, yeah, just getting ready for the next season. We're really excited about it. And uh, I think we got a good group coming back in. So it's going to be, it's going to be another fun year. Certainly. So this is going to be your ninth professional season, eighth with the Rivermen. And, you know, you're in, you're in your thirties and people ask, you know, what's the secret? How can Alec Hageman just continue to not only play but play at a really really high level and I think a lot of it is just your conditioning you're a madman in the gym and it certainly seems like it sets an example for a lot of the younger guys on the team yeah I mean I've always kind of prided myself in working out like I really I honestly I I do it for hockey but I also I kind of just enjoy it just in general like it's just a fun kind of hobby for me that I've always liked and I think it does help and I think last year we had a lot of guys jump on board and that kind of that definitely helped us out, I think, kind of rushing through the end of the year into the playoffs. And uh, but I mean, a lot of it's with with my age and the I guess you could say success we've had is with the Ribbon. A lot of it goes to Guy, though. He uh, we we put a system in place and uh, I think we hold everybody accountable to do the system. And that's what makes everybody successful on the Ribbon. It wasn't just I mean. It wasn't just one guy that you read a lot of 20 goal scores and a lot of guys having great success for the first time in their career. And I think a lot of it goes to the way he coaches our system and holds guys accountable and making sure everybody's doing their part every night. Stick a pin in the uh, weight room because I want to come back to that. But getting on your point, Gee, what do you think is it about his way of coaching and his style of coaching that enables guys, you know, like you or someone who may have just come in to the league or I may have not had a lot of success previously, like a JM Piotrowski recently re-signed with the Riverman to have that kind of success and really put them in steps where if they want to, they can take the next step. He, uh, his best, his best attribute, in my opinion, he holds everybody accountable. It doesn't matter who you are top to bottom. You could be a 70 point guy or a 20 point guy. If you're not playing that night, you're not, you're not going to play. Like he holds everybody accountable. So if you're not going to do your job, someone else will do your job. And he doesn't care. And so I think I think that really it holds people accountable to where, you know, if you're not giving it your all or doing the right things that you're supposed to be doing that you're not going to play. And he's live and died by that. And I mean, even with me, I mean, I've gotten set multiple games for a few shifts here and there. And it's I think it's a good message. And it's a pod, like like he's a he's a very intense coach. So he expects excellence, which is awesome. And sometimes he doesn't get it. So sometimes you pay the price for it but I think that's his best attribute is he expects excellence and he expects you to be accountable to your teammates and for the Peoria Ribbon organization and if you're not you're not going to play and I think he's he's held that since the day one I've been here and I think a lot of guys appreciate that though because there's a lot of guys that in other maybe leagues teams all around the world that you'll see the top guys they get away with quite a bit and they don't have to pay the price for it. They just can kind of get away with it. And Guy holds everybody accountable in that. And I think that's a, a very strong point of his. And honestly, what makes the Rubin very successful is because everybody's accountable every single night. Speaking on last year's team, who was the biggest gym rat on the, uh, on the roster outside of yourself, of course. I mean, by the way, Mike lately looks, you would assume him. <laughs> he's, he was a specimen of a human being. Uh, 
Actually, a surprising one is Levy. Levy's in the gym quite a bit. You wouldn't be able to tell by how skinny he is, but he's in the gym a lot, and he he takes care of his body very well. And then Jam was another guy that was in there a lot. And uh, Marcel and Barry, they were in there riding the bike every day with me and JM and all those guys. I mean, there was honestly, towards the end of the year, there was a lot of guys in the gym and actually like working to be in the best shape they could going into playoffs. So I would say probably Levy and JM outside of me and Lades was in there a lot. Don't get me wrong, but uh, I'd say I'd, I'd give it to JM or Levy for sure. A little bit of a two-way tie between those yeah. two. Perfect. And and it's even better that those two guys have both signed or coming back. They're going to be on the team for this coming year. Everyone's excited about that. But, Hags, switching the focus a little bit more towards you, you know, your two-time back-to-back Presence Cup champion. Was there any difference? Talk to us about the emotions of lifting the cup the first time in your career with Pensacola and then with the Rivermen here this past season. I mean, there, there was a difference. I mean, in Pensacola, don't get me wrong. It was, it was awesome. Cause I've been waiting for it for so long and it, and I finally got my hands on it and it was, it, that was a special team and that was a special time and I will never forget them. And I appreciate everything. And it was, like I said, it was very special to me still, even though it wasn't with the Ribbon, that was a special championship for me, but the Ribbon won that touched home for me because that was something I've been waiting for, like getting, getting to see the ECHL team win a cup and how, excited this community was about it and just being able to bring some of that joy back that we've been waiting for in Peoria and just being a hometown kid and being able to see friends and family like I had so many people reaching out to me just saying congratulations and can we see the cup can we take a picture with it and it was just I think being here is just it was a lot more close to home and it it meant a lot like because this this town and this team everybody that puts all the work in for the Peoria Ribbon have been waiting for this moment for years to come and we finally did it so it was it was definitely very very fulfilling for me so it was I mean they're both very I'm very happy to get both of them with both teams but the Peoria one yeah definitely hit home a lot more for sure I bet there was an area dry eye in the entire Hagman household when you lifted that cup, just such a, such a special moment. And you could tell not only on your reaction, but on the reactions of, you know, Mitch McPherson lately and, and coach Trudell and a lot of the guys who, who called Peoria home, either, whether it be just for that season or for multiple seasons, the, the relief. I remember we had Guion at the top of the summer. He said he could sleep better at night just because he brought that cup home. Was it the same to you or do you not carry that much pressure on yourself? No, it, it was. I mean, every, every year we came in here, we had nothing but the goal of winning the cup. And we got so close so many times and just finally being able to finish it and finish it in a way that we did in overtime. And just, it was, it was awesome. It was, it definitely made me sleep better at night. I'll put it that way. It was, <laughs> it's just something to where you don't have to answer. So are we going to win it this year? Are we going to win it? It was like, we did it. <laughs> we it's finally true. did it. So now we got kind of that weight off our shoulders. Now we get a chance to defend that title. And honestly, I'm extremely excited to get a chance to do that as well. Absolutely. And you were a massive part of the team, not just in the playoffs, but also in the regular season. What struck me is because you were essentially in the top two or three of SPHL goal scoring. I think you had the lead at one point, and then you had to sit out, take some personal time for some injury with an upper body issue. But then it's like a bunch of guys hit their stride. Alec Bear, Marcel Godbout, that's when they came on. It was that team had so many weapons. Yeah. Have you ever played on it? I'm sure you have, but what other team could you compare that team to just in terms of the weapons and the lethality of the offense that that team enjoyed? Uh, probably the year we actually had, like, uh, I can't remember the year exactly. I think it was maybe my second year. We had we had a lot of older veteran guys. that we, And they had a lot of, had like, Chris Wilson, Steve Mora, Walker Wintoniak, Power, and those guys are all very well known guys. Look, Dan Bremner, great leader. Like we just had, we had a lot of firepower that year. And I think that year actually we ran into a Pensacola team that had just as much firepower, and they beat us. But that was, I would say, we were very comparable to that team for sure. Looking on your career, you gained a bit of a notorious reputation. It seems like every everywhere I go in this league, folks either love you 
or they hate you. And <laughs> I, I and, you're, and you're no stranger to that, I'm sure. But do you ever notice the the animosity from the fans? Like you go in a quad city, you know they're giving it to you. I mean, that's just the nature of the rivalry. But do you ever notice that on the ice at all? Or or are you like Eric Eric Levine, who kind of <laughs> takes it in and uses it, you know, to their advantage? I mean. Yeah, I mean, I enjoy it. I mean, it doesn't – honestly, it's it's been going on for so long now. I don't even – it doesn't really phase me as much anymore. The only time I even notice it usually is during warm-ups when you're skating around and there's some signs or people wearing the turtle jersey or something like that. But it's – I mean, I, I think I've said this before. I think it's awesome because – if there's not like you get that fan experience, like it's like you want fans to hate you and make it fun when you go on the road. And like, I don't, I don't want everybody to, I would love for everybody to like me, but if they hate me, that's okay too. Like it's, it makes the SPHL fun. And I think that's what the SPHL fan base is awesome because there's, there's passion behind it. Like they, every, every fan base loves their teams and they'll, they'll die for their teams and they'll fight till the end with having to stick up for their guys or, saying that yelling at the rest or blaming them for something it's that's what i like about the sphl though like it's uh it's like we're minor league hockey but the fan base is intense and it's awesome and they care and that's that's what you want you want them to care and you want them to be engaged and they are so if that has to be yelling at me or cheering for me i'm all for it it's it's all part of the game and i enjoy it too it's it's something that fires me up sometimes and I don't know. It's a cool experience. Like I said, if uh, nobody was saying anything to me, I don't think it'd be as cool. But like when you actually get a little bit of animosity toward you, it's, it's kind of fun at times. Well, you know, you know what they say. If he's on your team, you love Alec Hageman. If he's not on your team, you hate him. Unless you're Peoria, we just love you regardless. <laughs> Appreciate that. Of course. Alec, I'm curious. You know, the Riverman got a chance to play Pensacola in the playoffs, but it was essentially a neutral site game in uh, – in Birmingham, Alabama, didn't get a chance to go down to the Florida Panhandle. We're going to get that chance this year. How excited are you going to be when you get a chance to go down to Pensacola, a team you won the cup with, and be able to waltz in with you now as a two-time President's Cup champion now with the Riverman? Yeah, I mean, I'm, a, I'm actually extremely excited, but I think me and Neville talked about it last year. We were kind of bummed out, and Ernie, that we didn't get a chance to go down there because, I mean, like we said, they took us in in a year where the Ribbon didn't have a thing. So, I mean, it's it's kind of – it was – it's just like I said, we won a cup with them, so it's a special moment for us. And it'll be cool because we never got to see the banner or anything like in person there, so it'll be awesome there. And then there's always that rivalry. So, I'm sure I'm sure the fans will switch pages once we get down there, how they used to like us. But that's – and that's okay too. But it'll be, it'll be fun. And it's always nice to get down to Florida in the nice weather and – so it'll be it'll be fun. I'm actually we're really excited about it, and uh, I'm excited to see that banner and be able to play in that rink again. Absolutely. Now, Alec, understand you've been doing a lot of work with the Peoria Mustangs. Tell us about your uh, collaboration with Guy uh, for his hockey camps, and obviously with the Peoria Mustangs. What can Mustangs fans uh, look forward to uh, uh, this coming season? You think? Uh, I think they're going to be very excited with what they got. They had, uh, I was actually, uh, they had their main camp last weekend and we were there and watching all the guys. And it was probably honestly, if not the best, one of the best camps they've ever had there with talent wise, top to bottom. They had three teams and the all-star game was a very, very uh, intense, intense game. And the compete level was high. So they got some big bodies for the junior age, so they're going to be a big, heavy team, and they're going to have some offensive firepower too. So they should be a very, very fun team to watch this year. And they got the new coach Blake Ortman, who came back from El Paso, and he's uh, he's young and he's full of life and energy, and he's he's excited about it. So uh, it'll be a good year for him. Last question for you, Alec, before we let you go. Obviously, you've been doing had some off season surgery. You've been rehabbing. Kim, is is the plan still to have you ready for uh, opening night on October 22nd? Can fans expect to see uh, the big captain on the ice here? Yeah, that's the plan. And uh, if not, I will be dressing. I'm seeing that banner raised in my jersey and my skates on. So I don't, I don't care what Guy says. I'm going to get out there and I'm going to see that banner raised on my skates. And uh, that's the plan as of now. Like, obviously, we never know what could happen. Things change, slow down, fasten up. I don't know. But – that's the plan, and uh, I'm pumped for that night. That's going to be an exciting night in Peoria Room in history, and it's going to be fun to be a part of it. That's something I think I'm going to remember forever. And I, I'm honestly, I already, 
I, they already said they uh, had a picture of the, the ring that Guy got to see. And I was like, no, I want to wait until all the boys get here and we get to see it. Like, I'm, it's, I want it to be just a special night. And I think for the fans, players, management, everybody, it's going to be, it'll be an exciting night. And I can't wait for it. October 22nd, can't get here soon enough. In the meantime, Alec, thanks so much for taking time out of your schedule to talk to us. We'll see you soon, my friend. Yes, thank you. We'll see you soon.